Philippines, Los Banos. Profesor Yuki Haru Ogawa PhD from Graduate School of Horticulture Chiba University, Japan. Honorable the participant of the Gas Lecture Series Agricultural Engineering Study Program Padajaran University. Welcome to the Gas Lecture Series Agricultural Engineering with the nutritional aspect of processed food and long-term preservation method in the post-harvest area. First of all, let us praise to the Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because of His blessing we are able to attend this event. Secondly, may peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who has guided us from the darkness to the brightest era. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Fiona Tushala Balkis, will be the master of ceremony, and let me read out our agenda this morning. The first opening, the second presentation of material from the speakers and submission of e-certificates to speakers and moderator, the third online photo documentation, and the fourth closing. The first agenda is the opening. Let's open this event by reading Basmalah together. Bismillahirrohmanirrohim. Hopefully with reading earlier, this event can run smooth smooth as still. First of, first of all, please, please pay attention to all guest lecture series participants. Attendance will be open when the speaker delivers his material, so there will be two absences. Therefore, therefore it is hoped that participants Ladies and gentlemen, step on to following agenda are presentation of material from the speakers. The first presentation will be delivered by Florencia Junior Colado Regino, PhD, from Institute of Food Science and Technology, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, with team nutritional aspect of processed food. And the second presentation will be delivered by Professor Yuki Haru Ogawa, PhD, from Graduate School of Horticulture, Chiba University, Japan, with team long-term preservation method in the post-harvest area. This agenda will be guided by the moderator, namely Astri Widya Santi STP and Eng from Pajajaran University Indonesia. Below we read briefly the life history of the moderator. Astri Widya Santi STP and Eng is one of the lecturers in the Agricultural Engineering Study Program, Department of Agricultural and Biosystem Engineering, Pajajaran University. Her last education was a Master of Food Engineering and Bioprocess Technology, School of Environment Researches and Development ASEAN Institute of Technology, Thailand in 2008 until 2010. Her expertise is in the field of process and product engineering, drying, and process optimization. To Asri Vidya Sati, STPM, and please time is yours. Thank you, uh, Ms. Fiona. Um, is it clear, my voice? Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Allow me in this opportunity to welcome all of you to the guest lecture participants by first praying our gratitude and uh, praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all blessings, mercies, and grace that made, uh, have made it possible to gather here in this virtual room. Respectable to the head of Agricultural Engineering Study Program, Dr. Uh, Sophia Diratna, the Honorable All the Lectures of the Agricultural Engineering Faculty of Agro-Industrial Technology, Universitas Pajajaran, dear distinguished guest student, and Honorable All the Participants of this lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Asri Widya Santi, and I will be the moderator. Uh, I'm very pleased to see you here and welcome all of you to the fifth uh, guest lecture series. Today's session is about nutrition aspect, uh, food processing, and post harvest technology of agricultural product. Okay, and for your information, uh, let me inform how the presentation will be going on. We will have a presentation for the next two hours, and each presenter will talk around 40 minutes, and after each uh, presenter has uh, presented that topic, we will have uh, discussion for about 20 minutes. All right. Uh, the first speaker has already with us. Good morning, Dr. Florencio. How are you? Okay. First of all, I will read his curriculum today. Uh, operator, please. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Good morning, Dr. Florencio. 
Oke, okay, Mr. Florencio Collado Junior uh, Reginio PhD. Uh, he's an an assistant professor at the Institute of Food Science and Technology, University of Philippines, Los Banos since 2015. His expertise is in nutrition, food biochemistry, and food processing. His educational background, he received his bachelor degree of science in nutrition from uh, University of Philippines, Los Banos, and then graduated master degree in food science and, uh, in the same university. And then in 2020, he got his doctoral degree uh, from Chiba University. His professional career is as registered nutrition dietitian and professional food technologist. He also received many honor awards and scholarship during his career. His research, maybe if you can next this slide. For his research interest is mainly about uh, bio properties of Sabana banana, influence of maturity and changes during simulated in vitro gastrointestinal digestion. And he also study dealing with innovative treatment for evaluating digestibility of plant-based food. He published uh, more than, uh, I think, 12 papers or articles in reputable journal. Here is the list uh, of selected papers that related to today's uh, lecture. The latest publication uh, are Impact of Drying on the Bioactive Compound and Antioxidant Properties of Big Nye Pomades. And the second is assessment of free SSF certified and insoluble bond phenolic of green and red parilla leaves and changes during simulated gastrointestinal resistance. Okay, next, uh, he has also received many research funding uh, that I cannot mention one by one. And now allow me to welcome the first speaker, Dr. Florencio will deliver uh, his presentation about nutritional aspect of processed food. Well, you have 40 minutes, sir, so please. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Mom Asri with the yeah, Santi for that introduction. Before I proceed with my presentation, I would like to express my gratitude to the staff of the Department of Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering Faculty of uh, Agro-Industrial Technology, Universitas Pajadharan, for granting me the opportunity to share my knowledge about food processing and nutrition. Also, special thank thanks, of course, to Dr. Dupati Siptangyas for extending the invitation. Okay, let me share. Uh, Mom, am I going to share my screen? Okay. Okay. So my topic for today's lecture is titled Nutrient Metamorphosis, so the nutritional aspect of processed food. So I will be discussing the changes in the nutritional uh, content of processed food uh, during the series of processing methods. So the overview topic, topics, so we will define some terms related to food science and nutrition. Also, we will be reviewing some nutrient classification function and sources and the main part is the effect of processing methods on the nutritional content of food so these are some of the processing methods that i will be dealing with first let's uh, define food what is food food is the basic necessity of man so it contains many nutritional and non-nutritional but 
biologically active substances. When we say biologically active, meaning it the basic example of non-nutritional uh, compounds are polyphenolic compounds found in fruits and vegetables. These compounds are known to help prevent our risk of having lifestyle diseases like uh, cancer and cardiovascular diseases. So we can define food based on its physiological, social, psychological, economic, and political functions. In psychological, foods provide, provide energy, build muscles and tissues, and regulate body processes. In terms of social meaning of food, we can define food as uh, our food can express our love for someone. Of course, food uh, can express our happiness, our culture, our religious beliefs. So foods, uh, food has always been the central part of our community. For the psychological meaning, rather, foods satisfy certain emotional needs of human beings. Uh, food can express sense of security, okay? Like what I said, love and acceptance also. For economic meaning, uh, of course, it also shows the ability to obtain, okay? And lastly, in terms of the political significance of food, uh, food naturally embodies power and authority. So it can serve as a political instrument Okay, one example is during hunger strikes. So in cases where a group has demands for government, for the government, this method of nonviolent resistance is often employed. Then let's combine food and science. So the word now is food science. What is food science? Food science involves the study of the physical, biological, and chemical composition of food. So it applies uh, various scientific disciplines and principles, including chemistry, engineering, microbiology, also nutrition, to enhance the safety, abundance, and wholesomeness of food supply. So in addition, food science study the causes of food deterioration and the concepts underlying food processing. So we mentioned the word food processing. What is food processing? We have uh, different ways to define food processing. One simple definition is the conversion of raw materials or ingredients into a consumer food product. Okay? So food processing starts with a raw material which can be of animal, vegetable, or, or plant or marine origin and then transforms them into edible products, which are then, uh, which are accepted uh, to consumers or acceptable rather to consumers. So in summation, all of uh, processes undergone by foods from producers to consumers are incorporated or encompasses food processing. The main goal of food processing is to extend the shelf life or the period which the food remains wholesome by preservation. Now let's define nutrition. Uh, food science actually and nutrition are interrelated which directly impact the health of living organisms. Uh, food science focuses on manufacturing, processing, food production, while nutrition is responsible for the maintenance of good health. Okay. In technical terms, nutrition is the science of food, the nutrients, and other substances therein, their action, interaction, and balance in relation to health and disease and the processes by which the organism ingests, digests, absorbs, transports, utilizes, and excretes food substances. So basically, uh, nutrition is how we interact with the food we consume. Technically, nutrition cannot be defined without the term nutrients. So when we say nutrients, these are chemical compounds found in food essential for the body's uh, proper functioning. 
and maintenance of overall health. Okay? Nutrients are used to supply energy. So the energy is needed, the energy needed is supplied by oxidation of food consumed. It is also used to promote growth, repair body tissues. So this can be found in uh, protein-rich foods such as milk, eggs, meat, and fish. And it also regulates body processes, so such as maintenance of body temperature, muscle contraction, control of water, balance. So those are some body, uh, body process processes that are regulated by the nutrients we consume, the nutrients in the food we consume. Now let's have some review about nutrient classification. So nutrients can we can be classified according to function, chemical nature, essentiality, and the last one is concentration. When we say function, uh, we are already discussed this a while ago. So uh, body building, energy giving, and body regulating. For the chemical nature of food, we can define or classify food as organic. So organic, we have carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and vitamins. In organic, we have minerals. Essentiality, so we can classify uh, nutrient based on essentiality. So essential and non-essential. So when we say essential, these are nutrients that must be obtained from the food because the body cannot make it or can, the body cannot make for itself in sufficient quantity to meet physiological need. This is different from non-essential, of course, in a way that uh, we still need this non-essential. However, the body has the ability to synthesize these non-essential nutrients. Last one is concentration. So, and this is one of the widely used classifications of nutrients. So we have macro and micronutrient. Macronutrients are carbohydrate, proteins, fats. Then micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. Uh, these are called macro because they are needed by the body in relatively large quantities. Then micro needed by the body in very small quantities. So let's define each macronutrient. First is carbohydrate, which is the primary source of energy. It is the brain's primary source of fuel, okay? specifically glucose. So the adequate or the presence of adequate glucose basically spares down, spares the breakdown of proteins from being used to make glucose needed by the body. This is the uh, protein sparing action of carbohydrates. So it spares uh, proteins for their primary function of building and repairing body tissues. And carbohydrate uh, functions as constituent of body compounds, such as in the brain, uh, liver, and connective tissues. Proteins can also provide calories, energy. So they are needed for growth and repair of tissues. When we have a certain condition like uh, recovering from surgery, so we need more protein for the repair of our tissues. And lastly, regulation of body processes. So these are functions of enzymes and hormones which are protein in nature. And lastly, we have fats. So fats are... Uh, source of stored energy. So stored energy because the body uh, stores any excess energy as fat. Okay. So uh, the transport of nutrients, specifically uh, transfer of fat soluble by uh, nutrients in the blood is also one of the functions of fats. And structure of cell membrane. So this is what we, uh, we call phospholipid. Okay, which is the fundamental building blocks of all cell membranes. Now let's proceed to micronutrients. So these are vitamins and minerals. These are uh, organic compounds, uh, organic or inorganic compounds distinct from carbohydrate, proteins, and fats. Okay, uh, These are the... 
general functions of vitamins for normal cell function, growth and development, and also regulate body processes. Uh, vitamins can cause specific deficiency syndrome by their absence or insufficient use. Okay? Minerals, on the other hand, are called building blocks because they are uh, vital components of our bones and teeth. Okay, they are immune system builder boosters, rather boosters. Um, during the time of COVID, have you ever wondered uh, why doctors are recommending uh, zinc aside from vitamin C supplementation? Okay, because uh, based on studies, zinc can preserve tissue barriers, which is essential to block the entry of virus and other pathogenic uh, microorganisms that can cause infection. And lastly, minerals can also regulate body processes. So one good example is by acting as electrolytes. So these include and phosphorus, which control water balance. And the uh, vitamins can be divided into fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins. So fat-soluble vitamins are ADEC or vitamins A, D, E, and K. Vitamin A is important for eye vision, immune system, cell growth, and skin health. So in, in the human diet, we can have preformed vitamin A and pro-vitamin A. Preform is usually found in animal sources, while pro-vitamin A are in plant pigments. So vitamin D is necessary to increase the efficiency of calcium, of vitamin D, in the skin by ultraviolet irradiation of the sun. Okay, And then we have vitamin E, which has a strong antioxidant capacity. And then vitamin K, which is needed for the synthesis of uh, proteins involved in blood clotting. So that's why uh, we can prevent hemorrhage because of vitamin K. So examples are green leafy vegetables. Uh, these are some usual sources of vitamin K. So for water-soluble vitamins, we have C, B1, B1 thiamine, B2 riboflavin, B3 niacin, B5 pantothenic acid, B6 is pyridoxine, B7 is biotin, B9 is folic acid, and B12 is cyanocobalamin. So uh, these B-complex vitamins act as mainly coenzyme in energy metabolism. So when we say coenzyme, so these are non-protein uh, compounds that are necessary for the functioning of our enzyme. Then we have minerals, which can be divided into micro and uh, macro and micro mineral, or the major and trace minerals. When we say major or macro, these are uh, used and stored in large quantities in the body. Examples are calcium, chloride, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, and sulfur. Okay, in on the other hand, trace minerals or microminerals are classified as minerals uh, required in the diet in smaller amounts. That's why trace, okay? Uh, specifically, less than 100 milligrams a day, okay? These include iron, copper, uh, chromium, fluoride, iodine, zinc, molybdenum, manganese, and selenium. So these minerals are uh, or act as cofactors in enzymes. So when we say cofactors, the same as a coenzyme, these are non-protein uh, component of our enzyme uh, that is required for the enzyme's role as a catalyst. Okay. Usually, these, these minerals are unaffected by the thermal treatments during processing. Now let's proceed to the main part, which is the effects of processing methods on our nutrients. Okay.
the first one we have uh, domestic cooking methods. So when we say domestic cooking, so these are uh, normal cooking procedures which uh, we are doing in our home like steaming, uh, boiling, and frying. So cooking foods, especially, especially in a lot of water like boiling or uh, fat at high heat like deep fat frying um, can reduce the amounts of vitamins and minerals in our food. So based on studies, the loss of vitamins and minerals uh, is mainly because of extraction into the li cooking liquid. Okay? It can either be a water or a fat medium rather than their destruction. Okay? Losses increase proportiona proportionally to the quantity of cooking liquid employed and the values of time and temperature used for a given cooking method. So meaning, uh, lower values of time and temperature generally allow a greater retention of nutrients. Okay. So uh, cooking vegetables by boiling at high temperature, for example, can decrease the amount of vitamin C to around 50% and B, B vitamins ranging from uh, 5 to 70%. Okay? The extent of, of degradation of these nutrients depend, depends on the commodity. Okay? Vitamin C, we all know that vitamin C is very susceptible to heat, um, air, and water. Uh, that's why it is the, uh, uh, the vitamin that is most likely to get lost during cooking. So among B vitamins, uh, B1 or thiamine is the nutrient most susceptible to thermal degradation and leaching from food. Okay? That's why this vitamin C and thiamine are commonly used as indicators of water-soluble vitamin losses in foods and vegetables and also in meat. Okay. Uh, most vitamins are sensitive to heat and water with water-soluble vitamins being more vulnerable than fat-soluble vitamins. So water-soluble vitamins specifically or especially most of the B vitamins and vitamin C uh, leach into cooking water while uh, vitamins A, D, and E are fat-soluble and can leach into cooking oils. Among vitamins, uh, based on studies, only vitamin K and uh, niacin or B3 are stable enough to hold up well during cooking. I already mentioned this a while ago. Uh, mineral losses from uh, cooking are so low. Thus, they remain better preserved than vitamins. So in fact, uh, the sole significant cause of mineral loss reported during boiling is Leaching. The bioavailability of nutrients may be increased during cooking. When we say bioavailability, so this refers to the extent a substance becomes completely available to its intended biological destination or we call the site of physiological activity. So by definition, in layman, uh, we define bioavailability uh, as when, uh, when uh, for example, when a medication is administered uh, intravenously, so its uh, bioavailability is 100%, of course. So because uh, uh, it is absorbed directly or transported directly in our, in our blood, okay? So increased... Uh, bioavailability during cooking because there is this degradation of antinutrients such as phytates, uh, oxalates, and lectins. So these antinutrients are commonly found in our food and can bind specifically to minerals inhibiting their absorption. So these antinutrients can be removed or deactivated just by soaking, or uh, boiling the food before eating. 
Uh, however, it is uh, not known uh, how much nutrient loss occurs in our diet because of these anti-nutrients. And also the uh, effects uh, vary among individuals based on our metabolism and how we cook the food we consume. Now, next is refrigeration and freezing. So we define refrigeration as is storing the samples around uh, 4 to 7 degrees Celsius. Refrigeration can preserve the food for days or weeks. It can also slow down the chemical and biological processes in food that could uh, contribute to its degradation. However, refrigerating produce does not prevent the loss of its nutrients. Okay? Storage temperature, uh, storage time, humidity, and light inside the refrigerator can affect the retention of nutrients in food. When we say storage temperature, the uh, higher the temperature, the greater the biological activity okay, of our produce, uh, the possible, uh, the higher the loss of nutrients, possibly the higher the loss of nutrients. For the storage time, the longer the storage time, uh, the greater the impact on the nutrients, of course. Mm. For the humidity, uh, uh, low humidity in the refrigerator, especially for vegetables, okay, uh, could lead to wilting. And this wilting is associated with the loss of vitamins in our produce. Okay. And lastly, the presence of light during storage. Of course, uh, there are some uh, vitamins or nutrients that can be degraded uh, or that are light sensitive. Okay. Examples are vitamin A. Mm, pyridoxine, B6, B12, cyanocobalamin, and folic acid. Uh, losses in refrigeration are attributed to the respiration, transpiration, ethylene production, and enzyme activity during storage. Of course, this is because after harvest, our produce is still respiring. And uh, various physiological processes remain active. Okay? So the produce will uh, possibly will utilize its nutrients to carry out diverse metabolic activities. Now let's proceed to freezing. Freezing, on the other hand, is uh, a, preser a food preservation method that can potentially deliver a higher degree of safety, nutritional value, and quality compared to refrigeration. Okay? Uh, freezing has very little effect on the nutrient content of foods because of its very low temperature. So around uh, less than 18 degrees Celsius. Significant losses of vitamins and minerals in food during freezing resulted from fluctuations in the temperature, length of storage, um, size of materials, pretreatment use, thawing method, and packaging. So here, in these factors, I would like to uh, emphasize on the pretreatment use. Okay, one method or one pretreatment method before freezing is blanching. Okay, this is usually done in vegetables to stop the enzyme activity. Okay, uh, when we say blanching, it involves thermal treatment and use of water, which is the reason for the loss of water-soluble vitamins in blanched and frozen foods. So studies have reported that vitamin C is lost and a higher percentage of uh, folate is also lost during the uh, blanching process. Okay. Also, I would like to uh, uh, give emphasis on the towing method use, uh, uh, which can have a significant loss of vitamins and minerals due to form, uh, thaw drip. Okay. 
So there are losses of uh, nutrients during the process of to drip. So even with proper blanching performed on the food, it will still retain nutritionally valuable levels of potentially, potentially liable nutrients for a period lasting at least 12 to 18 months. So we have discussed this a while ago that blanching of vegetables is necessary due to the physical and chemical changes that may continue to occur in frozen state. Okay? So we have also discussed the benefits of blanching. Example in blanching uh, vegetables like cauliflower and spinach. Okay? So if frozen without blanching, this produce uh, can become unpalatable within a short span of a few months. Okay, this is uh, attributed primarily to the oxidation of membrane lipids, leading to the development of undesirable flavors and odors in our produce. Okay. However, it says here that blanching still retains labile nutrients, which can be degraded at freezing storage. Okay. For example, during uh, freezing, uh, the growth of ice crystals uh, the growth of ice crystals causes the rupture of cell walls allowing the contact of enzymes with its substrate okay so leading to degradation of vitamin C so that's why vitamin C is continuously degraded during a uh, freezing storage okay so nutrient losses are minimized if raw material is not damage physically before blanching because if the produce is damaged before blanching there is a possibility of leaching of nutrients uh, which uh, results to greater loss okay next is fermentation so when we say fermentation it involves the composition of carbohydrates so uh, there is a decreased amount of carbohydrates in our food because the microorganisms are using it, okay? So fermentation can be lactic acid, alcoholic, and acetic acid fermentation. So in lactic acid and alcoholic fermentation, oxygen is not needed. While in acetic acid fermentation, oxygen is necessary to convert uh, alcohol to acetic acid, okay? So the effect of fermentation on depends on material and fermentation conditions. Uh, composition of food material, for example, if you have a relatively low uh, water level uh, in your uh, product in relation to the dry matter okay, of your fermenting plant material. So if you have a very low wa water level in your plant material, uh, the effect is that it may increase acidity uh, but concurrently inhibiting the development of the desired microorganisms. So when the uh, they, they will not consume the nutrients in our food, so this will reduce the loss of nutrients in our uh, plant material. And of course, fermentation condition. So if it involves oxygen, so vitamin C can is very sensitive to oxygen, so it can be depleted during fermentation. So based on studies, losses of nutrients during fermentation process are associated with the increasing nutritional needs of the growing lactic acid bacteria and meeting their metabolic requirements when the fermented plant material becomes a medium for this microorganism. So I have uh, discussed this a while ago that uh, bacteria will use the nutrients in our food in order for them to grow in the fermenting medium. Okay? It, they will be using the nutrients for their metabolic requirements or metabolic activities, rather. 
the content of water soluble vitamins is generally increased okay uh, except for vitamin C of course while the anti nutritional factors declines during fermentation so same as in cooking method domestic cooking so the anti nutritional factors are degraded which is good because there is there will be an increased bioavailability of our minerals okay so the increase in water soluble vitamins is due to the microorganisms that produce vitamins okay there are some certain microorganisms that produce vitamins like uh, vitamins uh, B2 and B12, which are riboflavin and biotin respectively. Okay, so except for vitamin C, because it can be degraded, as I said, it can be degraded through oxidation or by exposure to oxygen. Okay, so a higher degree of digestibility of protein has all has also been reported in fermented products. So this is basically due to the production of enzymes by microorganisms, specifically the proteases. So which can uh, partially degrade proteins, making them more bioavailable. Now let's proceed to thermal treatments like pasteurization. So we define pasteurization as a type of processing, thermal processing, that kills pathogenic microorganisms. So pasteurization is usually below 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? So it is used to process heat-sensitive food items such as milk. Okay? And based on studies, there is no substantial change in the proximate composition and fatty acids profile of milk after pasteurization treatment. So meaning uh, nutrients are stable during pasteurization treatment. Also, pasteurization has a mini minimal impact on the nutritional content of milk. Uh, as some vitamins were stable even after the treatment, such as uh, B1, which is thiamine, and B6, which is pyridoxine. Now, sterilization. In food science, sterilization of food is uh, usually associated with canning. And food. when we say commercial sterility, so this means that uh, there is destruction of viable microorganisms of public health significance. Also, in commercial sterility, there could be some dormant microorganisms and spores present, but the condition does not favor for their growth and reproduction. So the severe heat treatment during sterilization produces substantial change in nutritional quality of food. Okay? The degradation of nutrients uh, can take place during first the sterilization process. Okay? Next is the leaching of uh, water soluble nutrients okay specific for this is specific for water soluble nutrients from food into the liquid medium so because some some canned food uh usually uh have water okay water which we are discarding during consumption and lastly uh the chemical destruction during storage uh this is influenced by temperature, uh, residual oxygen, and the metallic surface of the container. So the losses of ascorbic acid during canning have been reported for different vegetables due to the duration of exposure to severe heat and leaching into the canning medium. So again, uh, it is the vitamin C that is always affected by heat treatment or soaking. However, a study reported that vitamin A content increases in thermally processed vegetables due to increased extraction efficiency uh, brought about by the destruction of structural components, so leading to faster extraction of vitamin A in our foods. 
And lastly, the dehydration or the drying process. So drying can significantly alter the food chemical composition and nutrients with an extension variable according to the type of food. So we have here type of food. Say here type of food. If uh, our food is a uh, or if we have a fruit that uh, needs to be dry, so it has uh, normally fruits, uh, most fruits uh, have high vitamin C. And vitamin C is very sensitive to light. Then after drying, it will give a high percent loss of vitamin C. Okay, It can also be according to the drying method. Okay, so when we have uh, uh we all we have different drying methods, and then one of those is freeze drying. And then according to uh, literature, uh, freeze drying is one of the methods that can retain almost ninety percent of the nutrients in food. And uh, when we define freeze drying, it applies uh, low temperature and pressure. To remove the moisture of the products. Another is according to intensity of treatment and operating conditions. So, meaning if the temperature is not that high, uh, most nutrients will be preserved well. So now we have discussed the different effects of processing methods on our nutritional con on the nutritional content of our food. So as a consumer. Uh, what can we do in order to minimize the losses of nutrients uh, during processing? Okay, One is avoiding the use of too much water during cooking or cooking the food for too long. Okay, Next is opt for cooking methods with lower temperature. An example is uh, doing pasteurization instead of the conver conventional thermal processing using high temperature. But uh, uh, we should take note that this is only applicable for products which is either low pH or what low water activity. Okay. Another one is uh, foods, especially vegetables, should be stored in cold storage for a short time in order to avoid loss of essential nutrients. So uh, normally, we consumers are storing our foods for a long time in refrigerator in a cold storage however uh this can degrade the nutrients in our food okay so we should store frozen foods properly for no more than 6 months so it will maintain the nutritional value of uh frozen foods uh Next is choose appropriate drying conditions, which can help retain nutritional content while extending the shelf life of certain foods and understand how to prepare food in a way that preserves its, nut its nutrients. Okay, So these two are based on our knowledge about food preservation. So we should continue educating ourselves on the cooking methods that preserve nutrients or update our knowledge about this uh, technologies. Uh, for example, uh, the conventional blanching method, okay? Uh, blanching vegetables briefly before freezing uh, can help retain the nutritional value of our produce. And we should also ensure a diverse and balanced diet that provides a wide range of nutrients. Uh, in nutrition, we are always saying that not all nutrients can be found in a single food. That's why we need to consume a variety of food. So by ensuring a diverse and balanced diet, issues related to nutrient losses in food can be prevented. And lastly, uh, even though certain nutrients are partially lost during fermentation, the physical and chemical changes brought about by the fermentation process, import new functionalities to the vegetables such as probiotic properties. So when we say probiotic properties, so uh, this food contain live microorganisms that when consumed may confer health benefits. So while losses and efficiencies are 
in a vita ball within a system. So we all know that uh, losses of nutrients can happen always when we process food. New products are formed that can have greater functionality in our body. Like this, uh, uh, the formation of probiotic properties in our fermented vegetables. I tell you, this is the end of my pre presentation. Thank you for listening, guys. Terima kasih banyak. Okay, thank you, Dr. Florencio, for giving us such an informative and interesting presentation. We can get a lot of uh, insight about uh, the relationship between effect of processing methods and nutrition effect of processed food. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and now come to Q&A session. Please uh, use the raise hand mode if you want to ask directly to Dr. Florencio, or you may type your question in the chat box. Okay, do we have already a question here? Student, oh yeah, uh, Denny Arifin. Okay, Denny, you may uh, open your speaker. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for the opening day for me. And I want to thank you so much for the Sir Porencio uh, for the explanation. And uh, so excited for listen your explanation for the material because it's important for us especially from the agriculture engineering and uh, maybe i i want to uh i have one question because in your based on your uh, powerpoint in your powerpoint if there is a statement is refrigerated products do not prevent loss of nutrients and uh, i'm still confused uh even 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 though we you know the, the the cooling from the refrigerator is process can reduce respiration and so why uh, so why and what is the mechanism by which agricultural products can lose nutrient when uh, refrigerated so the basically question is how uh, nutrient it can lose when the uh, product agricultural is uh, Called by refrigeration. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that question, Sir Denny. Okay. With regard to refrigeration and freezing, we all know that when we store our food at refrigerated or freezing temperature, the specifically the refrigerator in our home, so the produce will not yet uh uh, attain the temperature that we want. Okay, it will develop some time for the produce to have the temperature the same as its surroundings. So during that time of developing the temperature that uh we want to our food, there the food or the produce is still respiring. It is still continuously producing enzymes, continuously doing its metabolic activities. That's why the nutrients in our produce can be degraded uh, at the start of the freezing process or the or the refrigeration process. Specifically during freezing, uh, like what I've said a while ago, there are uh, freezing can can produce some crystals, uh, large crystals that can degrade the cells of our of our produce. And we all know that in, in the cells of our produce, the, the enzymes and substrate, uh, once we break the cells of our produce, the enzymes can now meet the straight and then they can engage each other. So this is the reason why there is still continuous degradation of vitamin C. So ascorbic acid days, uh, in the initial phase of freezing, can react with the with the ascorbic acid, leading to uh, degradation of our vitamin C. Uh, okay. Did I answer Okay. Uh, I think it's, uh, to me, but I have one question. May I give a question? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. This answer. Uh, uh, in your PowerPoint, based on your PowerPoint, so you have an uh, explanation about effects of processing method. The first one is fermentation. And the fermentation, yeah. the effects of 
uh, fermentation on the nutrient depends on composition of food material and fermentation condition. And maybe uh, I want to ask about how uh, how the effect from the fermentation. Maybe it's the from the based on uh the food like uh, if we want a um, fermentation of the make the kimchi what what's happened in of the process from ferment fermentation thank you sir okay so specific for uh fermentation like kimchi okay so in making kimchi kimchi is a type of lact uh, lactic acid fermentation because uh it involves the uh use of lactic acid bacteria innate in the uh vegetables or in the plant material to make kimchi okay so for in making kimchi uh we can assume is this anaerobic condition is good because it is not needing oxygen okay so the microorganism is not needing oxygen so the vitamin c specific vitamin C can be preserved if we have an anaerobic condition in our uh in during fermentation of kimchi however during fermentation there are also other other uh, uh other things happening like the metabolic activity of the lactic acid bacteria during fermentation they should uh uh they are needing nutrients for their metabolic activity for them to multiply and and convert those starches in our in our in our food to lactic acid okay? with the the mike the, in the food in our produce in the plant material or vegetable is depleted because the lactic acid bacteria is consuming those nutrients for their metabolic activities. Uh, okay, so thank you so much uh, for the answer. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you. And i like to have two questions, maybe from the student. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, Dr. Florencio, may I have a question for you yes. as a registered uh, nutritionist dietitian, uh, Andy? Yeah. Uh, may I ask how do the nutritional profile of processed food compare to their unprocessed counterpart? Okay. Uh, what the specific factor would customer be mindful uh, when evaluating the health impact of the processed food consumption? Okay, thank you for that question. Yeah, that is a good question. So basically, the difference between process and uh unprocessed or raw when we say raw these are fresh okay fresh food so not not the ones that we freeze okay so uh when the difference is that of course during processing there are some uh some uh, 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 happening can be the nutrients in our food. Of course, the raw materials will have high value of nutrients when compared to uh, processed food. However, uh, in uh, in recent times, okay, so there are methods that are being developed in order to uh, preserve the nutrients in our food and make the nutrients comparable to those uh fresh produce okay so there are different technologies being developed uh, nowadays in order to attain high nutritional content in our food also uh we can also uh, we can do restoration okay one process of of um replacing nutrients in the loss that are lost during processing or destroyed during processing is restoration so this in this method uh we are uh we are adding uh the nutrients that is lost or we are supplying the significant amounts of micronutrient or macronutrient that is lost 
uh, during that can be used in order to uh, of processing in our produce. And lastly, as a nutritionist dietitian, so we should, as a consumer, we should have like what I've I've uh, posted or written here in my presentation. We should have uh, a variety, okay, of uh, food uh, to be eaten daily, okay. We should not limit ourselves to one food or one food group. We should uh, take into consideration the variety uh, and balance. When we say bar variety, so meaning we are taking in uh, different types of food in a food group. Okay, When we say balance, we have carbohydrates, proteins, and fat in our, our meal. Okay, So uh, with, that, uh, uh, with that practice, by having uh, and balance in our diet, so we can at least have the nutrients, the essential nutrients that we need uh, for our uh, body to process. Thank you, Dr. Florencio, for the explanation. Okay. Committee, uh, do we still have enough time? Maybe is there any question from student or uh, other participants? In the chat book, uh, I think there is no uh, uh, question in the chat box. Uh, okay, Dr. Florencio, may I ask you uh, one more about okay. the... Okay, there the is a question from the student. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No file. No file. Oh, okay, okay. I cannot... No file. Okay, can I ask the question now? Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, so, like, yeah. In real life situation, like in the store, a person is comparing like canned and frozen vegetables, and uh, those those things are basically like sterile sterilized food, right? And my question is, what factors contribute to the degradation of nutritional quality during sterilization, and how this how do these changes differ from other processing methods? Like uh, maybe provide examples of sterilized foods and maybe uh what what nutritional trait of trait of should uh, they aware of when choosing uh, this sterilized food uh, maybe that's my question okay so your first question is about the factors that affect the uh sterilization conditions am i right i sorry uh Actually, it's only one question, but okay. uh, maybe it's too long. Uh, I will, I will, I will like squish, squish it for you. Like, uh, eh, maybe I will write it. <laughs> okay. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, it's it's in the, the in the chat. So the question is about the degradation of nutritional quality during the sterilization and how do these changes differ from processing method? Okay, so during commercial sterility, the priority in commercial sterility is to destroy the viable microorganisms of public health significance. So at, uh, at first, we are not into the nutritional content. We need to at least make the food safe first. Okay, make the food safe first and then destroy those uh, pathogenic microorganisms and then that's the time uh, we will know or we will determine the nutritional value of our food. Okay, that's the priority to uh, make our food safe first. And how do these changes differ from other processing methods? So as I've said earlier, the severe heat treatment during sterilization because we are subjecting the food at higher temperature in order for the uh, pathogenic microorganisms to uh, die or degrade, okay? So the high treatment during sterilization, actually the sterilization temperature for this during uh, 
during commercial sterility is around 121 degrees Celsius. So that's very high because we need to attain, uh, we need to uh, kill all those viable microorganisms present in our food. So that severe heat treatment during sterilization can change the nutritional quality of our food. Okay, We have uh, vitamins that are heat sensitive like vitamin A. Vitamin A and C are those are two vitamins that are very sensitive to heat and also are B, B vitamins. So those uh, can be affected during commercial sterility. So what factors contribute? Of course, the uh, one factor, the main factor is the severe high treatment during uh, commercial sterility. How this changes differ? Actually, it is not different from other uh, processing method because uh, we are also uh, incorporating heat in our food. And this one, the, the main difference is that we are incorporating high temperature, a very high temperature, which can have detrimental effects on, our, on the nutrients of our food. Okay. So again, for the commercial sterility, we should at least first uh, min, uh, have uh, make the food safe before we uh, we prioritize the nutritional content. So the priority here first is to uh, produce a safe food. Did I answer your question? Yeah, uh, thank you for the answer. It's uh, a good, a really good answer. And uh, I don't know on, from my question. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Nopal Ramadan. Uh, is there any question in the chat room? Or maybe is there any participant? Okay, uh, we'll get the Dr. Florencio. Uh, may I ask you a question about the uh, how does the choice of processing method uh, impact the nutritional quality of processed food? Alteration in essential nutrition, such as maybe in mineral or fibers that can occur during the processing technique. So uh, let's answer first the first question is uh, about the uh, processing methods that you will choose and which can have an impact on the nutritional content of the food. So that one, uh, it depends on the objective or your goal. If you want to so on the have, okay, so if you want of low pH do not subject it to very because uh, we have uh, 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 some some factors that uh, make microorganisms in your food which is the low pH and the low it de uh, it depends on the food that you was okay that's the answer to the first question and the second question i'm sorry uh, maybe uh, i will uh, try to uh, okay. can you repeat on what, the second? The, uh, what are the specific alteration specific okay. changes in uh note that you mentioned the, not in the vitamins, but in mineral and fibers that can occur during processing technique uh, for the changes in mineral and fiber. Thank you, Dr. Florencio. Okay, so when we say specific, uh, specific changes during processing of food, okay, specific changes in the nutrient content during processing of food. So um, like, let's have some example. If during domestic cooking or boiling, you have 
food that is subjected to boiling, so you have your water, liquid medium, and then in, in, in a liquid medium. So here, the pause uh, of uh, orientation of nutrients or the losses of nutrients is by uh, leaching out your uh, produce to your product. So leaching out meaning from your food that uh, there are pores that can be path the nutrients. So if we speak out to one, uh, meaning we we are not altering our so so the my nutrients are not being altered but rather just release from the uh from the food itself so however in high temperature processing like thermal processing so specific alterations may be uh associated with the degradation itself okay meaning the vitamin is degraded that's why the, the there is no uh possibility or or there is no no way that we can con that we can consume the specific vitamin or we can have the effect of the specific vitamin in our food so degradation in a way that it is being oxidized it is uh it can be changed into a different form wherein it cannot be absorbed by the body. So those are some of the specific alterations that can uh, that can happen during uh, processing. Well, thank you, Dr. Valencio. Uh, maybe, uh, unfortunately, we cannot respond to all the questions due to the time limits. If you still have uh, any questions, uh, you may uh, feel free to contact Dr. Florencio maybe by email. Yeah. Thank you again, Dr. Florencio, for your insightful speech you. as a speaker in today's uh, lecture series. I will give back the time and screen to Master Ceremony, Ms. Fiona. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Asri. Uh, before we continue to the next speaker, there will be an awardee of a certificate for the first speaker. Below is the e certificate for Florencio Colado Junior, Junior and Junior PhD. We thank you for your availability and of time and willingness to provide very interesting material. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I hope you learned something about my presentation. Okay, uh, maybe ladies and gentlemen, uh, next we will enter the agenda for the presentation of material by the second speaker, and I will return it to the moderator. Okay, well, Dr. Uh, Ms. Fiona. Okay, we move to the next agenda. Our second speaker today is Professor Yukiharu Ogawa, PhD. Uh, are you with me, uh, Professor Ogawa? He will be delivering lecture entitled Long-Term Preservation Method in the Post-Harvest Area. I will read his brief curriculum vitae uh, of Professor, please. Professor Professor at the Horticulture by University of Japan. His educational background uh, are in 1990 from Agricultural Engineering, Kagoshima University, uh, for his bachelor degree. And then he graduated as a Master of Agriculture in 1995. Then uh, Professor Ogawa finished his doctoral degree in Food Engineering uh, in the same university in 1998. Okay. Uh, his research interests are food and post-harvest process engineering. He also granted a research project, uh, namely development of advanced post-harvest technology 
for adding functional attributes to fruits from CFPS. Here are several articles, publication, and book chapters from Ogawa Sensei that has been published in the reputable uh, journal. The third paper or advanced in spread dried probiotic microcapsule for targeted delivery a review that has been published in Critical Review in Food Science and Nutrition. 2023, and then the role of herbal tea in reducing uh, the start digestibility of cooked rice or risatativa as an in vitro co-digestion study in NFS journal uh, 2023, and then the last is start digestibility of cooked rice as influenced by the adding of different the types Camellia sinensis and in vitro study uh, in Journal of Functional Food. Okay, I know I made you wait too long, <laughs> Ogawa Sensei. Uh, without any further ado, uh, you have 40 minutes. Uh, time is yours. Okay, thank you very much for introduction to me. Uh, I didn't think uh, so many uh, audiences so uh and i uh prepared uh my uh slide for the uh, undergraduate student so uh i hope uh it's acceptable uh to this uh, opportunity i share the screens can she Yes, please. Okay, so uh, this is not uh, for the academic presentation, uh, but uh, just lecture uh, materials. So uh, anyway, uh, this is uh, Ogawa uh, at Shiba University, Japan. Uh, I uh, will present uh, the food processing uh, for this uh, time. So anyway, uh, there are uh, uh, very uh, detailed uh, introduction to me, but uh, I want to uh, show my uh, brief introduction again. And then uh, I will make a, a lecture about the uh, food, food processing. So anyway, uh, as uh, Professor uh, introduced me, uh, I got a PhD at the Kagoshima University, but uh, I'm now uh, the professor at the Chiba University. Uh, as you know, uh, we are in Japan. Uh, this is the uh, map of the uh, land of the uh, Pacific Ocean, uh, Indonesia here, and uh, Japan here, and Philippines here. And uh, Japan has uh, uh, four main islands, and uh, there are many uh, small islands like uh, Indonesia and the Philippines. So uh, maybe you know uh, the capital of the Japan is uh, uh, Tokyo uh, here. And uh, this is a metropolitan area uh, of Tokyo. So uh, to my unify uh, these areas. And uh, this is a Tokyo metropolitan area. And Chiba is a neighbor of the Tokyo uh, area and very close. And Chiba University has a four main, uh, four campuses. And uh, our school, uh, the horticulture school, uh, is in uh, Matsudo City, uh, not Matsudo uh, it's Matsudo City. So this is a uh, very close to uh, the Tokyo. So uh, many students uh, can enjoy. The uh, it's uh, the city life. So anyway, uh, this is uh our campus uh because uh, Japan, uh, Japan in a uh, uh middle latitude, so uh there are uh very specific seasons like a uh, uh, spring 
and uh, summer and uh, autumn and winter. Uh, here, uh, once or twice uh, a year, uh, we have a, a snowy day like this. So anyway, uh, I got a PhD at the uh, Kagoshima University. Uh, that is uh, in a uh, uh, south uh, southern area. And uh, Kagoshima has a, a very famous city, uh, which has a very a big volcano. I think uh, there are many volcanoes in Indonesia, but uh, the Kagoshima is very close to the volcano. Uh, I sometimes uh, feel uh, its explosion like this one. And I enjoyed uh, my student life there. After uh, I got a PhD, I was a postdoc at the uh, Food Research Institute in Tsukuba City. So Tsukuba is uh, here uh, near the Tokyo. And uh, I worked uh, for uh, the institutions like uh, this one. Uh, I uh, focus on uh, 3D uh, virtual rec reconstruction uh, of the uh, agricultural products, like uh, uh, this one. Uh, this is a light grain. Uh, if uh, you are interested, in, uh, please uh, check the uh, articles. So anyway, uh, after I uh, worked in a scuba, I moved to the United States. Uh, maybe you know uh, the United States has a lot of the uh, institutions for the agricultural study, and uh, I was uh, at the uh, California uh, branch. Maybe you know uh, this is uh, San Francisco downtown. And this is uh, the uh, main building of the uh, USDA institutions. I studied uh, here. Not for the uh, academic uh, explanation, but uh, this is my apartment. That was very good. So anyway, uh, from my uh, living state, uh, living uh, apartment, uh, this is a uh, very scenic. Uh, you know, maybe this is a Golden Gate Bridge, and uh, here is a down, uh, downtown San Francisco downtown, and here is a Berkeley. So uh, this is a sunset. Uh, yeah, very beautiful, and I enjoyed uh, the uh, scenic life. So uh, anyway. Uh, if uh, you will get a PhD, uh, you can enjoy the uh, work very well. I think uh, for me, uh, I enjoy uh, very well. So, uh, but uh, my PhD work is a uh, uh, focus on the uh, uh, microstructure of the grains. And uh, I uh, developed a new uh, method to evaluate uh, its uh, structural property uh, for cooking or something. So uh, these works are based, uh, based on my recent uh, study. So anyway, uh, after I uh, enjoyed in the United States, I come back to Japan, came back to Japan and uh, 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 I became became the uh, lecturer at that private university, and after that I uh, come came to the Chiba. So, uh, sorry, not so uh, brief, but uh, that is my introduction, and uh, lead center interest uh, is like this. Uh, Uh, so, uh, in this time, I will uh, give a lecture about the food processing for 
undergraduate level, not a highly academic level. So anyway, uh, from here, uh, I will start the lecture. So uh, I want to ask you, uh, what is food processing? Of course, you know uh, very much, but uh, I need to uh, confirm uh, the principles of the uh, food processing. So uh, this is from uh, X Encyclopedia. Uh, food processing is a set of methods and techniques used to transform low ingredients into food or food into uh, other forms for consumption by humans or animals, either in the home or by the food processing industry. And I also uh, refer to Wikipedia, uh, the food processing is the transformation of agricultural products into food or uh, of one form of food into other forms. So, Transformation is a very important uh, term uh, to understand the food processing. So uh, the food processing is uh, consists of the uh, many principles and uh, application to the uh, unit operations. The uh, the principles is uh, uh, like this. Uh, material balance and heat balance and heat transfer fluid flow and the mass transfers and the reaction rate or something. So uh, we need to learn uh, these principles uh, to understand the uh, food processing. In this time, uh, I uh, just show the uh, uh, examples of the uh, food processing, but uh, not principles, but uh, application, uh, which uh, is a, a, a kind of a unit operation. So there are many unit operations, but uh, we uh, need to combine uh, these operations to uh, process the food materials. So uh, before uh, we uh, study about the food processing, why food needs processing? Uh, we need to understand. Because uh, food processing uh, typically takes uh, clean harvested crops or uh, slaughtered and butchered animal products and uses these to produce uh, attractive, marketable, and often long life food products. Uh, this means uh, long uh, shelf life, long shelf life. So uh, the food processing is uh, uh, needed to uh, make long shelf life of the food because uh, raw food materials are perishable. So, uh, and we also consider, need to consider how to extend the uh, shelf life. Uh, in this time, uh, I focus on uh, uh, agricultural product or uh, horticultural product, not uh, fisheries or uh, animal products. I just uh, want to uh, focus on these products. So uh, the, uh, we need to consider uh, what is the main problem for the extension of the uh, shelf life of uh, those uh, low materials. So uh, the main problem uh, to extend the uh, shelf life is uh, biological activities of the raw materials itself and uh, the uh, biological activities, activities of the microorganisms containing 
in it. So uh, we need to uh, 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 to uh, look for the how to terminate or reduce the biological activities to make a uh, longer shelf life. So uh, for that purpose, uh, we uh, can we need consider the uh, what is biological activity. So uh, bi biological activity is uh, one of the chemical reactions. So uh, we need to reduce the chemical reactions. Uh, I mean, uh, we need to remove uh, the reaction heat for the uh, biological activity. So that is uh, cooling. Uh, cooling is the most important uh, method to uh, make uh, long shelf life of the uh, agricultural products. And uh, the biological activity, uh, uh, not only biological activity, but bi microorganism activity uh, need to appropriate amount of the water. So uh, we need to consider the uh, water activities uh, to terminate uh, the micro microorganism uh, phenomena. So that is uh, uh, for drying. So uh, we need to learn the uh, cooling and drying uh, to reduce the um, biological activities uh, for uh, to get a, a longer shelf life uh, agricultural products. So uh, that, that is why uh, the uh, cooling or drying are uh, applied to uh, the uh, preserve up uh, the low harvest materials traditionally. So uh, this is uh, just uh, preparation step of the uh, class. And uh, uh, we need to focus on the cooling. So uh, I want to ask you, uh, what is the main phenomena of biological activity as a chemical reaction? If I can uh, be there, I want to ask you, but uh, in this time, I just, uh, uh, continue the uh, lecture. So uh, the main biological activity as a chemical reaction is a respiration. This is uh, just producing the uh, ATP as an energy. So uh, respiration is, uh, uh, we can uh, consider the respiration uh, like this, uh, C6H, Gels and O6, this is a uh, uh, glucose and plus uh, oxygen uh, changes to the uh, water and uh, carbon dioxide. During this uh, reaction, uh, the exothermic reaction, this is the exothermic reaction. So uh, we need to consider the standard reaction enthalpy. Uh, this can be calculated as this uh, value, minus 2,803 kilojoule or more. This uh, energy is uh, uh, produced by the uh, respiration, and uh, we call that respiration heat. So uh, if one mole of the glucose uh, is reacted by respiration, uh, it produ produces, uh, of course, uh, 2,803 kilojoules. 
this is a uh, uh, equal to the uh, 680 kilocalories of the heat. This amount is a uh, uh, can uh, can consider like this uh, the increase one degree Celsius for uh, 680 liter of uh, water or uh, from zero degree Celsius to uh, 100 degree Celsius for 6.8 liters of water. So this uh, value, this uh, heat uh, heat value is a very big. Only 100 grams of the glucose can generate uh, this heat. So uh, the harvested product, uh, of course, uh, can uh, still make a respiration and uh, generate such respiration heat. For example, uh, but uh, normally uh, the agricultural products are stored on uh, uh, in open air. So uh, we don't need to uh, consider this respiration heat very seriously. But if uh, we store uh, the agricultural products in a room, uh, I mean a uh, storage uh, container or something, so then uh, we have to consider uh, the respiration heat and uh, remove uh, such heat uh, immediately. So uh, anyway, uh, the, the uh, estimation of uh, such uh, respiration heat uh, can be uh, uh, calculated from the uh, using a, a respiratory rate of harvested products uh, like this. For example, uh, the respiratory rate of broccoli at 15 degrees Celsius is 5.5 uh, millimoles uh, CO2 uh, per uh, kilogram an hour. And uh, from the uh, respi respiratory equation, uh, production of one mole of CO2 needs uh, one sixth mole of glucose. Uh, this is due to the uh, molecular weight change. So uh, respiration heat uh, can be calculated as a uh, uh, one six multiply uh, 5.5 multiply uh, 10 to minus three power by and so this enthalpy. So uh, we can uh, calculate like this. Uh, respiration heat of the uh, uh, one kilogram, one kilogram of the broccoli is a uh, 0.71 watt. So if one tons, uh, I mean uh, uh, thousand kilograms of broccoli is stored in a closed uh, storehouse, closed room, the respiration heat uh, will be uh, 710 watt. And this heat uh, must be removed uh, using a uh, uh, cooling uh, method because uh, this heat uh, can affect uh, the deterioration of the uh, agricultural products. But uh, the respiratory rate is varied by the uh, vegetables and fruits. Uh, therefore, uh, cooling capacity uh, need to be uh, considered by the uh, uh, varieties of the uh, products. Uh, usually, uh, broccoli or spinach uh, and uh, like uh, asparagus uh, has a high respiration rate, very uh, quick uh, respirator, respiration they have. But uh, like uh, uh, cabbage or uh, lettuce, 
as a comparatively lower, but uh, they uh, also produces uh, the uh, respiration heat. So uh, we need to uh, reduce such heat by the cooling. So anyway, uh, I also uh, want to ask you the problem. Uh, the respiratory rate of the whole cabbage at the, uh, 15 degrees Celsius is uh, one millimole uh, CO2. Uh, uh, per kilogram hour. If uh, this uh, value uh, uh, occurred uh, during the storage, so calculate the respiration heat from 10 tons of whole cabbage stored in a storehouse after harvest. In this time, uh, the standard reaction enthalpy is uh, uh, also minus 2,803 kilojoules per mole. I just want to uh, ask you uh, this problem. But uh, this time, I, I, I will show uh, the uh, answer uh, quickly. So uh, as I uh, explained, uh, respiration heat uh, can be calculated by uh, one six by one millimoles and uh, 2,800 kilojoules per kilogram H. And uh, we can uh, estimate the respiration rate of the uh, whole cabbage at uh, 15 degrees Celsius uh, is 0 0.13 watt per kilogram. So uh, 10 tons of whole cabbage shows uh, the multiply 10 tons and uh, 100 uh, thousand kilograms uh, can be estimated by 1.3 kilowatt. So a uh, whole cabbage, uh, one ton of the whole cabbage uh, post harvested uh, whole cabbage can generate uh, 1.3 kilowatt uh, heat. This is a very big uh, energy, and uh, the whole cabbage uh, will be degraded by uh, such uh, heat during the storage. So we need to remove uh, this heat by the cooling, as I mentioned. So uh, anyway, uh, this is why uh, we need to apply the cooling uh, for the post-harvest product uh, and uh, to make long shelf life. But if you consume uh, the product uh, just after uh, harvest, uh, that's okay. But uh, to produce, uh, to process the uh, food product, uh, we have to uh, store under cooler, under cooling conditions. And uh, next one is the drying. Uh, because uh, drying is one of the uh, methods to uh, preserve the uh, fresh materials uh, traditionally as well. And uh, the reducing the water content of the uh, food product uh, to the very low level uh, can uh, uh, can reduce the uh, microbial uh, deterioration. Of course, you know, uh, dried materials uh, can make a uh, long shelf life because uh, the uh, microbial uh, microorganism uh, terminate, is terminated by the, such uh, uh, lower uh, moisture levels. 
So uh, we need to uh, make the line uh, for the, uh, to produce longer shelf life products. But uh, we also need to consider uh, what is the line. So the line uh, aims to remove the moisture, clo moisture uh, close to the equilibrium condition. Uh, that established a lot limit to the process. But uh, in this time, uh, for the uh, longer shelf life, uh, we have to uh, reduce the microbial activity uh, and uh, for that purpose, uh, we need to consider not only uh, the moisture content, but also the moist water activity uh, which is the uh, uh, equilibrium relative humidity of the uh, product uh, divided by 100. So we need to apply uh, this uh, concept uh, to estimate microbial activity. So uh, such uh, water activity is uh, uh, determined by the free water content, uh, which is uh, influenced by the uh, salt and sugar concentration. So uh, we have to consider uh, the uh, water activity uh, to reduce the uh, microbial activity for the uh, low food or uh, food materials. So this is a uh, water activity stability diagram. Uh, the uh, vertical uh, is a moisture content and horizontal is a water activity. So uh, normally uh, the moisture content uh, is a uh, uh, very, uh, we, we can uh, consider the moisture content, but uh, the water activity, uh, which is a, uh, influenced by the free water amount is a uh, uh, very uh, significant around uh, this level. So uh, even if uh, we uh, remove the uh, moisture uh, from the product, but uh, we have to consider the water activity zone around here. So, uh, to consider the water activity, uh, we can divide the zone of the uh, activity level. So uh, this is uh, just a concept, but uh, zone one is an ionic uh, level, and zone two is a covalent level, and zone three is a free water uh, level. So uh, we need to uh, reduce the moisture content uh, to reduce the microorganism activity uh, need to be here, zone two or zone one. So this is a, a free water level of the uh, moisture. So uh, this is why uh, this jump, uh, this jump and uh, we can uh, store a uh, longer shelf life for the uh, jam uh, compared by the uh, raw materials because uh, jam has uh, looked at the uh, uh, high moisture. Uh, that means uh, free water level is uh, very low uh, because uh, the sugar is uh, covalent uh, with uh, uh, water. So that is why uh, the uh, microorganism cannot uh, grow in the jam. And uh, the right materials also uh, can be uh, applied to the uh, longer shelf life. So uh, these are the uh, just uh, lecture level of the uh, uh, food processing, uh, and uh, I want some uh, make summary.
uh, food processing is one of the most important treatment to store the food materials uh, for the longer shelf life. And uh, there are many processing methods uh, other than drying, but uh, also the uh, like uh, milling, uh, freezing, or something. However, food processing uh, normally results in uh, several demerits, uh, such as nutrient degradation. I think uh, Dr. Reginio uh, talked about this uh, before. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, this is my uh, lecture for the undergraduate student uh, who uh, need to learn the, uh, what is the uh, food processing. But uh, in this time, uh, I just want to uh, say uh, you can enjoy the study and learn learning because uh, your knowledge uh, can contribute can uh, can can contribute to uh, enhance the uh, uh, the uh, human being quality. So uh, I encourage uh, to learn the principles of the uh, these. Uh, phenomena like uh, uh, heat transfer or uh, material transfers or uh, transfer rate or something. So uh, this is why I uh, show you um, examples. Thank you. <laughs> so this is, uh, that's all for my uh, talk. Well, thank you very much, Professor Ogawa, for your interesting presentation to an A session. Uh, please use the raise hand features in the Zoom, uh, then unmute your microphone and camera. I'd like to have three questions from the audience. Is there any question? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I would uh, may I ask you a question, uh, Prof. Ogawa? Okay. Uh, yes. As you mentioned in your slide about the respiration rate of cabbage and broccoli, may I ask uh, how can innovative post harvest technique uh, be implemented? to regulate or to optimize the respiratory rate of fresh produce uh, and also ensuring prolonged shelf life and also maintaining the nutritional quality. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I I just said uh, the uh, most uh, effective method is a cooling, but uh, we can uh, terminate the uh, respiration by the uh, Uh, reducing the to control the uh, atmospheric condition uh, around the uh, product, uh, which is a uh, uh, like a uh, controlled atmosphere uh, method or modified uh, uh, MA mo modified atmospheric method or something. But uh, cooling is most important, and uh, that is uh, reducing the uh, chemical reaction uh, rate. So uh, the uh, nutrient property, nutrient quality is related to the uh, such chemical reaction. So uh, I think uh, cooling or freezing is a, a most uh, effective method to uh, uh, to keep the uh, nutrient quality. Okay, thank you, the, uh, Professor Ogawa. Uh, okay, we have a question from the chat box, uh, Prof. Ogawa. It is from Alna uh, Arya, Arya Hasna. 
uh, he asked how are the current trends in drying methods uh, such as the adoption of advanced technologies and the emphasis on sustainability reshaping the landscape of the food industry and additionally in what ways do evolving customer preference for innovative dried product impact the strategies and practices of food producer in the drying sector so please uh, prof agawa uh, for the drying uh we uh drying is a uh, uh, a kind of the summer property a uh, summer uh, processing method so uh usually uh we need uh we need to add the heat to uh remove the uh moisture from the materials however uh the drying is a uh we can uh consider the drying is a one of the uh material uh transfer method uh i mean uh moisture uh molecules uh water molecules uh can be uh transferred to the uh other uh, other side so uh that is uh by the uh let's see uh uh following the uh fix uh theory so uh we can uh actualize the uh moisture removement uh by the uh uh the uh difference in the concentration of the uh uh moisture uh molecules uh water molecules so uh we can uh use the uh very dried uh atmosphere like uh, uh nitrogen gas or something uh to remove the uh, moisture level uh not uh use the high uh, temperature uh method so uh but it takes a uh, longer longer time uh compared with the uh, uh heat uh method heating method so uh in this time uh we uh can apply the uh, freeze drying or uh the uh uh vacuum drying or something however uh yeah that, that those are those methods is very effective but uh it takes a lot of the energy and uh relatively high higher cost uh operation so uh we uh should uh consider uh the property of the raw materials uh which can uh uh remain uh can remain the uh nutrient properties uh by the heating or something so uh it's depending on the materials i think Okay, that... Thank you, uh, Sensei, uh, for the explanation. Arya, uh, did it answer your question? Yeah, I think drying uh, has also positive and negative side. Yes. And we should consider many aspects uh, dealing with uh, selection of uh, drying method, uh, like Prof. Ogawa has already mentioned it. Is there any question again from the student or all the participants? You may type your question in the chat box or you may ask directly to Professor Ugawa. Oh. Please, uh, Mr. Hanarko, you may ask. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah, Ogawa-sensei, Morning. Ah, it's more
、あの、東方議にあの出席させていただきます。<笑>あの、本日、あの、大志賀市中、大変興味深い講義を誠にありがとうございます。えー、いろいろ、あの、数学語の,あの数及び素材における、あの、食品学校のことをとても勉強になりました。えー、ですねあの、ありがとうしかもしませんけれどもあの、今後ともよろしくお願い申し上げます。ありがとうございます。Thank you. Unfortunately, in this time, I,、uh, Thank you. Uh, I thought、uh, I、uh, will make a lecture to the undergraduate student. So,、uh, It's very、uh, principal lecture, I think. Okay, thank you,、uh, Mr. Hanato, for the greeting and also for the、uh, a repeat of question, Mr. Hanato. Okay,、uh, next for the audience, is there any question?、Uh, We wait for your question. Okay,、uh, Professor,、uh, Professor Ogawa,、uh, in the context of agricultural practices,、uh, how can the advancement of food processing、uh, play the, the role in enhancing,、uh, I think, long term preservation methods,、uh, especially for harvested crops? And、uh, maybe in your、uh, experience, What consideration should be taken into account to ensure the effectiveness of this、uh, kind of technological invention, especially in post harvest area?、Uh, please. Yes, yeah, because uh, I uh, explained uh, just、uh, biological activity, but we can、uh, focus on a specific biological activity uh, like. Uh, Uh, enzyme reactions, you know, which is、uh, very uh, variable uh, by the、uh, temperature. So、uh, we can、uh, apply the uh, specific uh, treatment method to、uh, select the、uh, termination of the、uh, biological activity.、Uh, I mean, uh, uh, if uh, we can stop the uh, enzyme uh, reactions, To、uh, enhance the、uh, browning, so we can uh, uh, keep the uh, uh, apparent colors uh, of the uh, uh, product. So、uh, we, at least uh, for my uh, research, uh, we uh, aim to uh, uh, select. The、uh, which biological activity can、uh, can be、uh, used or can、uh, need to be、uh, terminated. So、uh, I will, I, I am、uh, studying about the,、uh, such method、uh, to apply the、uh, specific uh, heating uh, treatment or、uh, specific.、Uh, Atmospheric、uh, modification. So uh, this is what uh, my, uh, my uh, uh, opinion and idea. Well, thank you, Okara、uh, Sensei,、uh, for your、uh, insight for the、uh, advancement technology in post harvest area, especially.、Uh, Committee, do we still have enough time for the QA?、Uh, student, you may ask a question in Bahasa, it's okay. If、uh, in chat box, or you may ask directly to Professor Ogawa. Yeah, please、uh, send me an email if you need to make a question. Is there any? Participant who raised the hand. Okay. Yeah.、Uh, Professor Ogawa,、uh, maybe、uh, I want to、uh, know your perspective、uh, about the, the key challenge in 
uh, food processing, I think uh, maybe uh, it is will be uh, associated with the the preservation method in post harvest. Um, uh, how how do this method uh, actually contribute to the overall sustainability of food supply chains? Maybe if we preserve long term, and then how it will affect the overall I think sustainability in a food supply chain? Yeah, because uh, the agricultural product is uh, normally uh, the seasonal product uh, in the uh, the upper up to the uh upper uh middle uh, latitude. Of course, I know uh in the uh tropical area, uh tropical area, uh the agriculture product is uh produced uh yearly. However, uh normally uh we need to consider uh how to uh store or uh, how to uh, make a longer uh uh shelf life so uh the agricultural uh, and food processing uh technique uh, can contribute to the such uh stabilized uh food uh, uh distribution uh food uh uh let's say uh demand or something so uh I think uh, the uh, food processing or uh, post-harvest uh, processing uh, techniques can contribute to the uh, uh, stabilized uh, 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 live, uh, li la life uh, for the humans. <laughs> Sorry, it's a uh, not uh, answer, but just my uh, opinion. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Yeah, uh, I agree with you. Maybe uh, uh, food processing will make uh, makes more food uh, more accessible, and then also safe for consumption, and it also meeting the demands of growing population. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, now uh, we see that there are many uh, choice of foods, like uh, Dr. Florenzi has already mentioned that we have to consume and have a variety of food and to to make sure the the in yeah, in terms of quantity and also quality, uh, I think uh, food processing and also post harvest has an important uh, role. In, in that in that case okay uh we still have uh around two minutes left if there is a question from the student or the participant you can type your question in the in the chat box So if uh, you have uh, uh, any uh, more uh, questions or uh, interest, uh, please send me the email uh, uh, yes. directly. Okay. okay if, uh, unfortunately, we uh, maybe due to the time limits, if there's uh, no question from the speaker, uh, feel free to contact Ogawa Sensei uh, by email okay i would like to uh, express our deep thanks and gratitude to ogawa sensei for the inspiring and interesting presentation okay the general lecture has finally come to an end but before i close the lecture i would like to draw a conclusion from what the speaker has presented for the first speaker, Dr. Florencio uh, states that nutrition are classified based on function, chemical nature, essentiality, and concentration. So it is highly important for us to examine the nutritional content of processed food. And it's crucial to recognize both the positive and negative aspects. And then for the second speaker, uh, 
Professor Ogawa emphasized uh, on the food processing. It is a term that encompassing various techniques and methods uh, to transform raw material into consumable food product. And the primary goals of food processing is to make for, uh, food more accessible, uh, safe and also convenient, and enhancing its nutritional value. And food processing also play a crucial role in meeting the demands of the growing population uh, by providing a diverse range of safe and nutritious food products. Okay, I would like to express uh, uh, deepest thanks to uh, all the speakers, Dr. Florencio and Professor Ogawa. Thank you for joining us to share your knowledge and insight. Uh, we can learn something new and increase our understanding related to nutritional aspect of processed food, uh, food processing, and also preservation method uh, in the post-harvest area. In the future, we expect that we can collab collaborate more on research and also uh, in academics. We hope you find an interesting and informative uh, case lecture series. Thank you for being uh, a wonderful participant during the session. I apologize if I made any mistake while moderating this event. Hopefully, to see you uh, soon. Uh, finally, let's give applause to all the speakers and to you all. Thank you. And I will give the back time and also screen uh, to the Master of Ceremony, Ms. Fiona. Thank you, Ms. Asri. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there will be an awardee of a certificate for the second speaker and the moderator. First, there is a certificate for Professor Yukiharu Ogawa, PhD, as the second speaker. And next, the certificate for Asri Widya Santi, STPM Eng, as the moderator. We thank you for your availability of time and willingness to provide very interesting material. Once again, thank you very much for the speakers and moderator. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the next agenda, we would like to ask permission to take documentation of this activity. All participants are asked to turn on their cameras. Okay. One, two, three. Once again, one, two, three. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We are reached the end of the agenda. Let, let us close the guest lecture series with reading Hamdallah together. Alhamdulillah, Hirobil Alamin. The series of guest lecture series, Agricultural Engineering Study Program, Pajajaran University 2023. Maybe you want to appreciate as the master of ceremony would like to thank the audience for the participation. And we also apologize if their award or action there are less pleasing. That's all from us. Once again, thank you very much. Wabilahi Taufik Walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you again, Dr. Florencio and uh, Professor Ogawa. Thank you, Ms. Dupadi. Thank you very much, Ibu Asri. Thank you very much, Ogos. Sensei and Pulau Thank you very much. Thank you.